Hi there, Dead Eye Del Boy here, back with another video, and today we have got quite an interesting one because it is featuring action from yesterday's manufacturer series in the FIAs that aren't the FIAs anymore. They are the GT World Series events. So, not the FIAs, but it's the FIAs. Um, so, we're going to have a look at really just how broken some of it is um, um it's just quite incredible some of the things that are happening at the moment um when it comes to doing anything with the game in general and um, whether it be single player not being available um because of server issues or the broken practice lobbies the broken servers that are causing people issues getting into races but we'll have a look at all anyway and uh, you can let me know what you think about it at the moment. But there is some racing in there as well for us to unpick. So yeah, we'll have a look at that as well. But yeah, if you haven't liked any videos on the channel, you haven't subscribed before, then please, please think about doing so. It would be a massive help. And I appreciate every single subscriber this channel gets. Believe you me, we're only a tiny little player in this massive world of Gran Turismo. But every single subscription to the channel counts and helps. So if you could do that, then it would be very, 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 very much appreciated. So without further ado, let's get into the action. So here we are entering our first race, about to do the qualifier. You can see over on the left hand side the chat from one person there, Needham, saying there better be no disconnections. Well, that would be a minor miracle at the moment if there were no disconnections because what you're about to see is just typical of how things have been going so here we are in the pits we're going to be in the pits for quite a while and um, so we're going to speed this along until we actually manage to get out of the pits and there you have it finally out of the pits and we've only got 14 of us left so six people disconnected in total before the race begins and it's it's really just disappointing because people do give up a lot of time and effort to practice and make time to actually race in these you know it's more pre although it's only a test season it, it's it's a more prestigious event and it's the first one um, of gt7 so yeah that's very disappointing indeed However, we have we're one of the lucky ones. We've managed to make it into the race. And we're going to go and try and set a qualifying time. Now, I hadn't actually done much in the way of qualifying um, practice before this. It was a last minute decision. And I only had one shot at doing it. So it was a four o'clock session. And I decided I would jump in and try my luck with very, very little practice. It's a brand new track to me as well. I've never raced this track in my life prior to this so tried to learn it very quickly and yeah we get thrown in to a pretty decent lobby as well some very very decent drivers in here guys like sparks and uh, prima phoenix you know guys that yeah are, are just a lot quicker than me in general so um, we'll see how we get on as we try and set a semi-competitive qualifying lap I should have also mentioned that the manufacturer that I've chosen, if you hadn't already noticed in the pre-race lobby there, was the Peugeot RCZ. So that's the, the car of choice. I went for that because it's historically it's a really stable um, car. The, you know, it handled brilliantly in Gran Turismo Sport. However, what I have found is that it is very snap happy on the rear end. Gran Turismo 7, it's a bit like the Audi R8, it's got some of its characteristics now. Um, under braking, if you, you know, if you're going under braking pretty heavily, it, it just seems to step out on you, especially on the downshifts. So you really need to watch yourself. But you can see there, we set a 127.7. It was good enough for fifth at that moment in time. However, it wouldn't be for much longer, as that turned out to be not a very good lap. And, unfortunately for me, it was the best I could manage. But, we're about to get the action underway, and here we go with the first race of this video. So, 
as I said, we're in a lobby that's, yeah, faster than my capabilities at the moment anyway, and for the amount of practice that I've been able to put in. Um, we have got Sparks in front of us, uh, we've got Dan TGT in front of Sparks, um, and yeah, it's going to be difficult for me to keep up with them, in all honesty. So, I really just wanted to try and kind of survive this uh, race and see what we could do. Um, yeah, just keep the car on the track, basically, for as long as possible, or where my um, immediate goals. So you can see, going down the home stretch there, into the first braking zone, I'm really, really hesitant on the braking, especially knowing how easily the back end of this car can step out, so we don't really get close enough to Sparks to um, get into the toe, and you can see how tentative we then come into this section as the car gets a little bit squirrely under the the left right turns and yeah we're under pressure from the cars behind Sparks got a little bit wide there in front of us but we're going to have to try and just hold on uh, for as long as we can you can see from the delta we're already over a second behind Sparks and the cars behind myself are closing in so not a very good first lap indeed so far but up ahead, um, they've got a, a nice healthy pack, so coming up into this um, braking zone, in this track, it's really, it's a heavy braking zone, it's in a really, really tight hairpin, and it's one of these sections that you know, anything can happen on it, and you can see up ahead, we're going to get a little bit of action, because come round the corner, and Dan TGT, unfortunately, is going sideways, heading towards the barrier and that's not good for him but it gives us a place so we have although had, had a very difficult first lap we've managed to pick up one place so could have been worse but we're well separated from the field now but we're back in the, the 12 sparks um so yeah that's not not too bad i suppose um sparks going a little bit deep there he seemed to be struggling a little bit in that jagger as well um as we come round the corner quite safely. This section here is really difficult in the RCZ because when you come into this right hander, if you just get it slightly wrong, you can just feel the back end just wanting to kill you. Um, and this second gear tight right hander as well was another corner that was giving me some difficulties uh, over the course of the race. But we've kept the car on track, we've kept it pointing forwards, but here we get it all wrong. And that's what I mean by the back end stepping out. And we just did everything we could there to save ourselves going straight into the barrier. And unfortunately that gives the Dutchman, um, Van Zuften, Van Zutfen, um, the opportunity to easily pass us. And yeah, that was a bit annoying, but I, to be honest with you, I was just glad that I didn't spin it completely. Um, because it felt like it was going to do that uh, on a lot of occasions. So moving forward, we might as well just jump straight to the last lap because nothing much happened in between time. And we can see there though, um, we've got now a three second gap to the Dutchman in front. So he's long gone as far as I'm concerned. But the yellow flags are out and that doesn't always mean you're going to benefit from it. But we do benefit from it in this occasion. You can see the Greek there, Mario, he's had issues of sorts with somebody. Which we'll go back and take a look at I think. Um, to see why we've picked up a, a place, but we have indeed picked up a place, so we've moved up and a disconnect moves us up into the top 10, so, you know, just shows you, <laughs> you might as well always keep going even if you're not having the best of races, because we've went from P12 to P10 on the final lap, and we're going to get a top 10 finish, albeit only 14 cars started, but hey, that's not my problem, I'll take the top 10. You see Mario desperately trying to catch me in the background there as we come across the line. So, one event done and a top 10, well, you know, it's better than nothing. Not a, not a particularly fast time at all there, but it was, a, it was a good lobby, you know, a lot of fast drivers in there, faster than me. I was just happy to be in there, you know, not completely embarrassing myself and managing to get a top 10 out of it for my troubles. Just jumping back into the lobby there, you can see over on the right hand side that we've managed to pick up a, you know, not, a not an insignificant 203 points there. But you can also see in the chat on the left hand side that Dan TGD has said thanks Sparks. Now, not really possible to work out if that's, you know, genuine or sarcastic or what that meant. So, unfortunately we don't have the pre-written chat anymore that usually 
gave us an indication of that. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the replay. We'll find out just what happened on that last lap and to Dan on that first lap. Now, I think it's worth looking back at that from a different viewpoint. Um, well, let's go back actually and look at it from Dan's viewpoint just to see what happened there. As he comes around the corner, you can see Dan's just lost a little bit after going a little bit deep. And it was as if he had nowhere to go. You know, Dan just appeared in front of him a little bit. It's difficult though, it's one of those ones, you'd have to analyse it. I don't know if the stewards would be able to portion any real blame. Because if we look at it here in slow-mo, Dan's went deep, you can see the German went even deeper, so the two of them have kind of followed each other off the track, or Dan's kind of followed the German off the track, almost, but he's managed to recover it better, and he's got his car going again, he's got it squared up, but just there he loses the back end, and you can see he's now coming across in front of Sparks, now Sparks is, you know, he's off the, well, he's off the coming off the accelerator, you can see the inputs are coming down. He's trying not to get into him, and it's the slightest of contacts here. And at one point, it actually looks like he's squared Dan up, but then you know, you can see what happens. Dan just tries to get going again and heads off towards the barrier. So, I don't know. You can let me know in the comments what you think about it. I know Dan wasn't happy with it, but I don't know if he's watched the replay since and changed his opinion or not. It's a difficult one to call, to be honest with you. I know Sparks and Dan are certainly not dirty drivers, they're very, very clean. So, yeah, interesting one. So, after all of that, we decided we would have another go, but you will notice it is not an EMEA. We are now on my US account, because I thought, let's have a look and see how the US servers are getting on with things. It is only a test season after all, so there's no harm in that. Well, that's what I think anyway. So, yeah, we will have a look and see, you know, maybe they're having some better luck with the servers in terms of disconnects. And here we are in the garage and not going anywhere fast. So here we are. I kid you not when I say it took about 10 minutes to get out of the garage. It may have actually been a little bit longer than that. And you can see there are only nine of us left and... It didn't even give us any time to do a qualifying lap because the qualifying lap, the qualifying time is now down at 30 seconds remaining. So none of us are even going to get the opportunity to cross the line and set a lap time. So here we are about to start the race now in P2. I can only assume they've given us the grid positions based on DR uh, because it certainly wasn't based on lap times. We did not complete one, neither did anybody. So off we're going to go now. And what I will say about this race is... It's a fantastic race you're about to witness here between myself and the Brazilian. Um, so, yeah, if you're, you know, expecting a dirty driver race, then you're not going to see this. You're going to see just a really, really good battle here um, for f five laps. Um, so I would encourage you to stick with it if you want to see some decent action. Um, you can see the Brazilian, he's in the Aston. I'm still in the RCZ. I've chosen that manufacturer on both my accounts. Just for consistency, really. I kind of wish I hadn't now. Now I know how rear snap happy the RCZ is. Um, and when you can't tune it to do anything to help it, then you're kind of stuck with it. You can't even affect the brake balance anymore. But here we are. We've managed to get away from P3. You can see the gap opening up there. I presume they're all battling with each other, which is good news for me. And you can see the Brazilian up ahead. He's managed to pull out a 8 tenth gap on me, but the slipstream, although not the strongest anymore, it is a little bit longer, um, I think you can pick it up with, if you're within kind of about a second, although you won't make up massive amounts like you used to on Gran Turismo Sport, but we certainly had that corner in the hairpin, we were doing pretty well at that, we were able to close up most of the time, even in our EMEA races we were taking a good line through there and picking up some time. So yeah, we've got a, got an opportunity now to, to try and do something with this race, um, given the fact that we have, well, only one person in front of us. Um, you can see again, now the gap between ourselves and P3, fairly consistent at uh, that sort of 1.8 mark, 1.8 second mark, and yeah, that's going to be helpful for us. The Brazilian, he's been fairly consistent um, and the gap has been fairly consistent between us. To be honest with you, 
at this point, I still wasn't really thinking about trying to catch them. I was just really thinking about you know, trying to hook on to curbs and keep the car running in a straight line. I was starting to kind of find my rhythm a little bit by this point. Um, I, I was a little bit more you know, comfortable with how the car was handling. Um, I think the more laps you drive in a car, obviously, obviously that, that will come. This kind of track, though, it's one of those tracks over there's kind of left-right turns, which, the, you know, the car does get a little bit unsettled, especially if you're shifting down through them. Uh, so I was just having to watch my gear shifts. Again, you can see how much we gain on the Brazilian there. It must have been kind of frustrating for him because he was pulling away from me um, throughout the first half of the lap and then the last few corners of the lap, yeah, we pick up some time and like I said, it must have been frustrating for him to watch all his hard work being undone as we go across the line there and set the fastest lap of the race. So, on to lap three now and you can see he's going a little bit deep there and I'm starting to wonder at this point, maybe he's going to feel the pressure a little bit, maybe it's not just me who, who feels the pressure um, when they're leading a race because uh, I'm one of the world's worst bottling it and you can see he definitely made a mistake there but it kind of put me off because I thought I was going to run into him at one point so I kind of over did the brakes and slowed down too much so we kind of lost time out of that his mistake actually was to his benefit as he opened the gap up to over a second there but he goes very wide in that corner there we actually take a, a better line through there and that enables us to make up a little bit of time um, and you can see here going into the straight which is important because if you can get a good exit out here, you can make up time all the way down. So you can see that from the Delta, we're now back into the you know, 7 or 8, eight tenths kind of mark, which is better than we were in the previous laps coming up to this stage. And I know I can get you know, a good zone, breaking zone here. I can really close in on them, and you can see that's exactly what we do. So now we're going to run down um, across the line to start the second last lap. And that's one thing about these races. They were at least just short races, so they didn't take up too much of your time. I struggle to get the time to do a lot of uh, online races, particularly the, the FIA races, which are not the FIAs anymore. But you can see here, we're now going to go down to the triangle around the outside. Uh, an ambitious move, but we back out of it. Don't want to do thing, anything too silly at this point, so we know we've kind of got him under a little bit of pressure, so we'll see how he copes with it. Um, just to see, you know, a full lap of me kind of breathing down his neck, but we kind of get it a little bit wrong there. You can see there we go in too narrow. He takes a much better line. Look at the exit he gets here. Immediately just opens up a nice gap. So at this point, I kind of felt like, yeah, we're just going to be back to this kind of eight, nine tenths of a second, up to a second gap, and you know, all my hard work that we were doing to try and put the pressure on him was out of the window, but. Yeah, we know we, we are, you know, a little bit quicker in this back straight. You can see again, we, the Delta coming down. We were just able to get better exits out of that corner, which are crucial coming onto this straight. But with a lap and a bit to go, it's kind of feeling a little bit of a lost cause, to be honest with you. But we know if we can get a, a good break in zone here, then we can. But we didn't look we far too early on the brakes here. For some reason, I don't know why. And, yeah, it's so the one time we didn't actually really make up any good ground on him into that zone. We're flying down the home straight. He's going to feel a little bit more comfortable now. He's coming across the line with, the, you know, over eight tenths of a second. Um, I'm just under now. Um, going across the line. And only one lap to hold on to or onto the lead for. But he gets a little bit deep there again. He wasn't taking the best of lines through that corner. So... At this point, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to commit to this lap. And we're going to try and put pressure on him. I'm just going to, you know, there's no point being particularly careful anymore. You can see with the line I took there, a lot of my left-hand tyres up on the curb there. But he has picked up a crucial, or what could be, a crucial track limit penalty. Now, that must have been heartbreaking for him. But you can also see how much I've gained on him as well, due to the fact that I'm now pushing hard. I've just decided to throw caution to the wind and we're going to go really all out attack for the last lap you can see he's getting a little bit loose there and look how much we're, we're actually gaining on him now now he's got the half second penalty but even without that I, I fancied my chances now I've been able to take him and you're going to come up to this penalty zone which is going to be pretty crucial, pretty penal you can see there he goes into the penalty zone and yep, 
perfect for me because we're going to absolutely fly past him, hit the breaking point really nicely there, get the calf turned into the corner and get on the power, don't spin and it's unbelievably going to end up to being a win for us in this race. I was as surprised as anybody. Um, the way it started, the whole issues getting out of the pits, the disconnects, we were lucky we stayed in the race, our patience paid off, and across the line we went to take the win. So absolutely delighted with that. And a much better finishing time as well. It was about 7 or 8 seconds quicker total time than we were in our EMEA race. So it just shows you we were starting to get the hang of it a little bit. So, you know, all's well that ends well. So there you have it, a victory for us in the Gran Turismo World Series. It might be the only one we get, but we'll see how we get on for the rest of the season. Um, but yeah, fantastic race with the Brazilian, enjoyed it. You can see over on the right hand side, total points earned, 231. Happy with that. Um, yeah, couldn't ask for much more than that. So. I'll leave you with that, and if you've stuck around, I'll say once again, hit that subscribe button, make this little channel a little bit bigger, and every subscriber is very, 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 very much appreciated, so appreciate it, everybody. Yeah. But until the next time, I will see you all, and have a good day, night, weekend, week, whatever you may be doing. Goodbye.